Do not try to force yourself to produce good works. Rather, rest in God and watch him work it in and through you. Rest in him so that he can live through you. Hey guys, welcome back. Or if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Alicia and I make videos all about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how to live in first love with him, seek first his kingdom and have a deep living relationship with the Lord. In today's video, we're going to dive into the second half of Ephesians. Understanding the book of Ephesians, I went through chapter one and two and three so far. So I'll link those videos in the iCard for you to check out. Um, but in today's video, we're going to dive into chapters four and five, which I am titling as the walk portion of the scriptures. And so if you haven't yet, grab your notebook, your pen, your Bible, and let's get ready to hear what God has to say to us today. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the revelation of your son, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you did on the cross for us, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you would speak through me and speak to the heart of that one who is listening. And Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us. Help us to see exactly how you want us to live. Reveal whatever it is that you want to reveal through your scriptures, Lord. And we just thank you for speaking to us. And for revealing your great and magnificent love to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So in chapters 4 and 5 for the book of Ephesians is known as the walk portion. If you go through chapters 4 and 5, you'll notice that Paul says or uses the word walk many times. And I just have some notes here and then I'm going to hop into the scripture. So the first two chapters are sitting how we are seated with christ and that from that position of being seated now we're able to actually walk and walk is another term basically that we could use for actually being a doer of god's word walking comes from first being seated with christ and walking means to actually do it by his spirit and um, so there are many scriptures paul writes in galatians 5 16 to walk by the spirit so that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so walking is something we do by being led by the Holy Spirit. And so in order to walk, we have to recognize that the starting point is God. He is the one who makes us walk. He's the one who enables us to walk. And it's by knowing his truth, knowing his word that we're able, that we're actually able to walk according to righteousness, according to what pleases him. And walking is not about doing what's right. It's about doing what is good. A lot of things are right, but that doesn't mean that they are good things. But whatever is good is actually the right thing that God wants us to do. So next on my, my notes, I have all who sit can walk. If you're not seated first with Christ, you cannot walk with Christ. You must first sit with him, know your position first. And that's an inward working and walking is the outward working out. So in other words, God works it in us and then empowers us to actually walk it out and do in our lives daily. Uh, Philippians 2, 12 and 13, Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God in you, giving you the desires and then empowering you to do what pleases him. And so there's an inward working of God. And then we do our part in being led by the Holy Spirit and working it out in our lives, doing the things that pleases him. Next time I know is I have that God has given, given Christ to us. The father has said, here is my son. I'm going to give him to you. And it is Christ in us who lives in us and enables us to do the things that pleases him. All we have to do is yield to him. It's just say, yes, Lord, I will do that. You want me to do this? Okay, I'm going to do that. You want me to not do that? Okay, I won't do that. Another point on my notes I have is whatever virtues you lack, do not seek those virtues, seek Christ. If you lack patience, he is your patience. If you lack joy, he is your joy. If you lack peace, he is the Prince of Peace. Do not seek those virtues. Do not say, Lord, please give me more patience. It's Lord, be my patience. I want you 
to work in me long suffering and patience. I want you to be that through me because it's if by default, when we yield to him, he produces that, that fruit in us. God cannot give us love apart from himself. He is love. God cannot give us joy apart from himself. He is joy. And so when we ask the Lord for things outside of him, it's not something that God can do. Everything that he does is from him to him, through him, by him and for his glory. And so he is the one that we need. He is our wisdom. We don't ask for wisdom apart from God. We ask for him because he is wisdom. The Bible says that that God has given us Christ as wisdom to us. And so it's him, his person, who he is. He is all that we need. And so rest in him, yield to him and watch him work that fruit in you. Watch him do it in you and through you. Another point that we can take from this chapters four and five is do not try, but trust. Faith is not a thing that we try to work up. Faith is trusting in God himself as a person. That is what faith is. And so do not try to do anything. Trust him, yield to him. Do not try to force yourself to produce good works, rather rest in God and watch him work it in and through you. Rest in him so that he can live through you. And so what I have here is that the focus for this part of the scriptures, chapters four and five, is that God is after one thing from you. He wants one thing. And that's what chapters four and five is going to show us. And so if you have your Bible, you can open it up. I'm going to start off here in Ephesians four, and I'm going to focus on the scriptures that have the word walk in it, or that give us some context about what does walking mean. So I love it. Chapters four, chapter four, verse one, Paul basically starts off saying, first of all, because of everything I already told you in chapter one, two, and three, I want you to know this. Number one, I am a prisoner. And the reason why I'm a prisoner is because I'm serving the Lord. But he says, because of this, I want you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God. He says, this is straight up. You've been called by God because God has called you live a life worthy of that calling. Then he gives them some things I, I think are um, descriptions a descriptor of what does it mean to live a life worthy of your calling? This is always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Make allowances for each other's fault because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. And so Paul is harping, harping on unity saying in the body, wherever you're at, seek to be unified in spirit and binding yourself with peace because there's only one hope and one calling and we've all been joined together with that one thing. Another version says, walk worthy of the calling in which you have, that you were called, okay? There is a walking out that is produced by the working in of God, the inward work of God. Verse 17, Paul says, therefore, you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles do. Another, another version says, do not live like the Gentiles do. The walking, again, Paul is showing the walking is an outward thing that we look at, an outward thing that we observe. It's the fruit of our inward life. That is what the walking shows. It shows the fruit. Paul goes on to explain, hey, this is how the Gentiles live. You no longer walk that way. You no longer talk that way. You no longer do those things. If you have truly learned from Christ, if you have truly taken his spirit, then there should be a change. So Paul says in verse 25, put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. So he's making some really um, clarifying boundaries of what does this look like? characteristics he's describing what does walking by the spirit look like what does no longer walking like the gentiles actually look like and he's describing something because people out there in the world will say yeah no that person did you wrong cut them off stay angry at them it's only creating bitterness in you paul says no first of all you can be angry but do not sin then he says do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place 
to the devil. So there are areas in our lives that we can allow the devil to move in, allow him to take part, allow us to, uh, basically we're allowing him access to our emotions, to the bandwidth of our mind, the thoughts that are going through our perspective. Paul makes another statement as to what does it mean to walk worthy of your calling? He says, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but only what is edifying. So if it's not edifying, why are we saying it? He says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, verse 30, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. He says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has, um, Christ forgave you. In chapter five, again, just a continuing letter, Paul writes in chapter five, Paul goes in deeper as what does it mean to walk? He says, be imitators of God as his dearly loved children. Walk in love as Christ walked in love and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. So what does this walk with the Lord looks like? It looks like living like Christ, being loving, loving our neighbor, recognizing that Christ did not come to judge. Therefore, we do not come to judge, but we come to extend grace and love and forgiveness. Paul says in verse eight, for you were once, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. If you want to know how you're doing, if you want to know, am I really walking as Christ would desire me to walk, as God has called me to walk? Am I really walking in a manner worthy of my calling? Then you see, you can look at the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. You can look there and see, am I really exhibiting love? And if you want to know what love is, 1 Corinthians 13. You can go look at chapter four. I mean, yeah, chapter verses four to eight. You can go ahead and look there and see, okay, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not boastful nor envious. It is not rude. You can just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you areas that you are not yielded to him. We are not producing the fruit of the spirit. And I love this. Verse 10 says, find out what is acceptable to the Lord. So we already know. Righteousness is acceptable to the Lord. Love is acceptable to the Lord. Joy and peace and righteousness. Philippians 4 talks about whatever is good and righteous and true and noble, praiseworthy. Think of these things. God is very clear on what is acceptable to him. And I love um, in the New King James Version, it has these titles, subtitles, and it says, walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom. And so we are to know what the Lord wants. Verse 15, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, we redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time, redeeming the time, not wasting your days, not wasting your hours or your minutes, but redeeming your time through how you are living, through how you are walking, through how you are displaying the love of Christ, through how, through actually walking worthy of the calling to which God has called you in through Christ. Paul says, do not be drunk with wine, but rather be filled with the spirit, right? Singing spiritual songs and melodies in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to God, the father in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in fear. There is a way that we are to walk. There's a way that we are to live. Another version of um, chapter of verse 10 Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And then uh, verse 15. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Verse 17. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And that is it for chapters four and five. When it comes to walking with God, we have to know what pleases him, which he's very clear on what pleases him. And there's two commandments, love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Know what pleases God and yield to him. Don't try to do the things that pleases God, trying to please him, rather rest in him. Know that God is pleased with you 
and delight yourself in the Lord and he will inwardly work those things so that you are not producing fruit effortlessly. Jesus said in John 15, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me will bear much fruit. All you have to do is abide and rest in the Lord and he does the rest. All right, that's it for this video. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. If this video has blessed you, please share it with someone else so it can be a blessing to them. By doing that, you help us to reach more people for the cause of Christ. So thank you. See you next time. Hey guys, if you love this video, then check out these next two videos that YouTube thinks that are the best videos for you to watch next. See you soon.